The book that I wrote a few years ago with my fellows at SRI, Ed Kinderman, who turned 101 yesterday, Hugh Crane, unfortunately he passed on uh, some time ago. Uh, it's called A Cubic Mile of Oil. Say a little bit about why that book came out, but I gave the talk seven, so I will not go over that same information. Let's talk about replacing cubic miles of oil. Cubic mile of oil being a, a measure of energy that the world uses. And when you think about that, you really have to get real. And nuclear is the option, and that's why I'm here. Trying to find with people what connects. When it is entirely framed as stop using any f fossil fuels right away in order to protect the environment, what we are missing is the other part of it, which is that we need energy for just about everything that we do. It takes energy to lift people out of abject poverty. We know that our current practices of production and consumption are unsustainable. We recognize that. But there's this tension because energy use is central to the way of our life. About 15,000 children under the age of five die every day. 15,000, that's about on the same order of magnitude as the number of people who died in the tsunami. So imagine a tsunami hitting every day, selectively taking away children under the age of five because of lack of energy. That's energy poverty's cost. That's what we are facing right now, we are living with, but it's not being talked about. And if you want to eliminate that, you have to lift people out of poverty, and that takes energy. So there's this tension between protecting the environment and the social justice aspect. And if you want to have a, develop a comprehensive energy policy, you must acknowledge the magnitude of the problem to begin with. The good question is, well, how much energy does the world use every year? It's a good question to ask, but immediately we con confront the Star of Babel. We get energy from many sources. There's oil, coal, natural gas, nuclear, and each of them is talked about in a different unit. We always talk about gallons or barrels of oil. We talk about tons or BTUs of coal. We talk about scuffs, standard cubic feet, for natural gas. And then we use kilowatt hours or megawatt hours for electrical energies. The lack of uniform units presents a serious impediment to having a sustained conversations, meaningful discussions. Moreover, since each of these units by themselves is a very small amount, represents a small amount of energy, we are forced to using mind-numbing multipliers like billions, trillions, and quadrillions all the time. And, and, and it's easy to slip on them. Hugh Crane was the one who first came up with this notion kind of analyzed, he says, well, world uses about 80, then 80 million barrels of oil a day. How much volume does it represent? How big is the pool? And he found that it was almost one cubic mile. So we said, well, let's put all the, the energy sources on the same footing of cubic mile of oil. So this was the 2006 numbers. So there's the oil was about one, there's coal was 0.8, natural gas was about 0.7 put on the same unit in the same chart. The pattern essentially hasn't changed. There's a little larger sliver for the other renewables. Now they've grown to about 3% of primary energy. That's about it. In primary energy, nuclear is still about 4% as it was. The global emissions of CO2 have continued to rise. In 1990, we used to emit about 21.6 billion tons of CO2. The desired target from Kyoto and other protocols is got to bring it down to about 80% of the 1990 level. That means we're going to get down to about 17.3 billion tons by 2035. But right now, even with the compliance with all the uh, intended nationally determined contributions, the INDCs, that the COP21 at the Paris Agreement, the global emissions are going to rise from the current 36 billion tons to about 55 billion tons instead of going the other way. In 2035, instead of being around 17, we will be at 55 per capita energy consumption at the bottom and uh, GDP or something. But instead of GDP on this graph, I, I looked at the UN's uh, Human Development Index scale for different countries. And you can see there is a good correlation that goes up as the 
energy consumption increases up to a point, once you're about the, a thousand gallons of oil per year, you are pretty much plateaued out. And a gallon per year is, is, on, is on a per capita basis a fairly convenient unit as a CMO or a cubic mile oil would not be, I'll be using micro or <laughs> CMOs in front. For a personal level, our energy consumptions in the U.S. is 2,200 gallons of oil per person per year. There are some countries which are even more, Canada being one of them. But most of us, I mean, the European ones, around 1,000 is a decent number to strive for. If I want to use that as a guide and say, well, if I assume a population of 9 billion people by 2050 and a desired minimum per capita energy consumption to ensure that level of human development index, and I need about 1,000 gallons of oil equivalent worth of energy per year, uh, per capita, then I'll need about 9 trillion gallons of oil, or equivalent, which is more than 8 cubic miles of oil worth of energy. A gallon of oil is worth about, if I use just direct in, uh, conversion of, uh, to electrical energy, it'll be about 36 kilowatt hours. But the fact is that using electricity, and if I find ways that give me electricity directly, I don't have to waste two-thirds of the energy to produce it. So for like a nuclear power plant or photovoltaics, if something gives me a one kilowatt hour, they basically displace 10,000 BTUs of natural gas, not just 3,000, which is the thermal equivalent of a kilowatt hour. So using that, uh, a gallon of oil being about 12 kilowatt hours, come to about 108, 110 terawatt hours per year is what the global d need would be. Compare that with the current global electrical production, which is only 24,000. So you have to up it about four or five times. It's, it's doable, and it's, uh, let's say, I'm, I'm not saying what technology we are going to use, but let's say if we use about $5 per watt for installed capacity, what it means is about $2 trillion per year of investment each year for the next 30 years globally. And that represents only 2.7% of, of the gross world product. So it's doable, it's not insurmountable, but we have to be very consistent and do it year after year. People talk about the dramatic rise in the falling costs of wind and solar and that will save. Perhaps here's the chart, this is the kind of chart to show. Going out to 2030, I don't know where will we reach our target. So let's see, let me draw it on the log scale so that we can see what we need to get. That's the, the target. And here if you draw the line, you see you might be falling short. And remember, so on a log scale, even a slightly further down over there from the target, you are really much, those are the bigger areas. That's where the big electricity is. Down here, it's only a small amount, just a few to a small terawatt hours over there. If you miss it, you miss it by a mile. And there are other challenges to the all renewable scenario. They have lower capacity factors and the material intensive. They are rather poor in that regard and it's gonna strain the global supply chain for basic raw materials such as copper, steel, cement, all those things. And so that's not a very likely one. And then there are some policies that we have adopted here that are really hurting things that are um, clean, like the nuclear power, which is clean. And you know, here we are on, for one thing, we are short of having clean electricity and we are turning off nuclear power plants. And if you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you should do is stop digging. And we seem to be digging ourselves into a deeper and deeper hole. Nuclear power is an option we cannot ignore, despite the fact that it is the safest in terms of deaths per terawatt hour produced. You can show this graph to people as many times as you want, talk about the facts, but facts don't seem to matter. They always bring up something or another. It's either the risk of explosions. First of all, you have to tell them that it's not a bomb, it's a nuclear reactor and their bomb things are different. And finally, they always say, oh, it's too expensive. I don't know. I think that why we have to look at why did it get to be so expensive? This is a cartoon borrowed from Wade Allison's slides, actually. There are the unreasonable standards 
that we have placed on nuclear power. Uh, that high cost has had terrible consequences. What it meant is it's been replaced with gas, oil, and coal. My plea would be, let's take a look at nuclear power again. The global demand for energy is in cubic miles of oil. Our solutions have to scale to that level. So when you look at any of these sources, try to scale them to them, see what it takes. And even if, it's, if we start with nuclear power, just to get to one CMO worth of energy from a nuclear power plant, I need one gigawatt reactor every Monday for the next 50 years. Torcon, are you ready? to deliver? <laughs> I hope so. I really hope so that you can do that or somebody else. But it's a, a, we, need, we need it on that level, even with that. For starters, I hope that uh, we can change our policies, like the re renewable portfolio standards that we have in California and the PG&E kind of telling people, automatically putting them on 50% renewable path. These things have the undesirable effect, undesirable from my point of view, is that it is cuts the market for nuclear. They cannot compete in that. They cannot supply to that, which means their cost for the f remaining few customers even goes further up. Like to see um, companies that are running big data centers, which are huge consumers, big publicity media, they get a splash on that for signing big contracts with a wind farm or solar or something like that. Apple says that, and Microsoft says that. But if one of them could sign a 100% nuclear deal, wouldn't that be great? We could save the Ablo Canyon plant that way, perhaps. It is a big challenge. There is not enough energy to waste. We all need to get informed and get involved.